Hello, Uggies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today's question comes to us from Lou Nichols, W3LOU. He says, first, I'd like to thank you for all you do to share your vast wealth of knowledge with those of us who benefit from it. Thank you. Of course, you realize I bone up a little bit for each video. <laughs> My question, I'm considering uh, changing over to balanced feed line, but unsure how to incorporate the lightning arrestor at the feed line. I do have an answer for you on that one. Presently, I have 75 feet of coax between the radio and the ground rod with the lightning arrestor, then another 75 feet of coax to the MFJ2010 antenna. Uh, the MFJ2010 is an off-center fed dipole that covers all of 40, all of 20, uh, part of 10 and part of 6. And it's less than $100. It is the reference station antenna because it covers so much for so little money. Okay. Uh, let's see. The, um, the latter line would feed other antennas as I'm pretty sure that the MFJ2010 has a ballon built in. It does too. 50 ohm coax. Okay, it's designed to be fed with 50 ohm coax. Uh, the latter line would feed other antennas. That antenna works pretty well, so I'll leave it in place. It does work very well. My plan is to add a horizontal loop uh, fed with ladder line. I used to have one of those, a very large one. Thanks for all you do in 73. Well, first of all, let's take a look at what we can do TX Engineering came out with this fairly uh, recently. This is a DX Engineering Ladder Line Surge Protector DXE LLSP. Okay, and you attach your ladder line coming in here, coming in here, and then there's your ground, which you connect to your, your ground right over there, okay? They're not very expensive. In fact, they're less expensive than uh, the regular coaxial lightning protectors. Now, I know a lot of people have done this with just using spark plugs. They, they drill holes in a plate, put nuts on the spark plugs here, and then their ladder line comes in and touches this on either side. Uh, that's a little iffy because you need quite a bit of voltage to fire the spark plug. This is a more modern uh, lightning arrestor and this is the kind of thing that you can use for that. Now I'm worried about your saying that you've got 75 feet of coax. You've got a ground rod here. You've got 75 feet of coax uh, to the radio. And another 75 feet to the antenna. And this is the ground rod. Uh, and my question is, why? Um, this ground rod should be over here, right where your cables go into the house. Is where you should have a ground rod and put in here. I'll just call them lightning protectors. Um, this is where they should go, here, okay? If you want, uh, it is considered best practice to also add a ground rod here and a lightning protector here. This coax can be either laid on the ground or buried. A lot of coax is available for direct burial. Uh, just remember that it's there. <laughs> okay, so this 75, 75 feet. If it's uh, RG8, X for like through maybe 15 meters, this is an okay length. Otherwise, you're going to want to go to like LMR 400 or RG 213. Okay. Uh, let's see what else is in your question. Yeah, I wouldn't, I, I don't know, maybe this is the edge of your building, but you don't want to let lightning into the house. And if this is on the ground and there's a nearby lightning strike, you'll excite it 
rounded at this end, but this end could be very high voltage. So that's why you want it right where it's going into the house. The horizontal loop. I'm going to talk to you about the horizontal loop. There is a horizontal loop in the handbook, which basically is, you know, a, a, a loop like this with uh, masts or something. I only had 20 feet. So this wasn't very high. So on 80 meters, I found it, it put a ballon, 4 to 1 ballon, uh, in the corner, fed it with coax with the 4 to 1 ballon. Um, the problem is that this is a multiband antenna. If this is a full wavelength for 80 meters, is 80 meters, or around 250 something feet. I'm just going to put this as a, you figure out, figure out what it is, um, around here. And yes, I built one like this. I had 20 foot, because that's all I had at the time. All right. And does the antenna work? The answer is yes, absolutely it does. On 80 meters, it mostly goes straight up. On 40 meters, you're going to get some of this. By the time you get to 20 meters now, you're going to start to have a very complex radiation pattern out like this and the same on the other higher bands. So it's a case of if that's what you want to do, uh, fine. And you can feed it with ladder line, which is a better choice. Ideally, you would bring the ladder line all the way into the shack to your antenna tuner. All the antenna tuners have an output for ladder line, or they should, okay? And you hook it there. The problem is that if there's any unbalance on this ladder line, it will act as though it is a transmitting antenna, okay? If there's the least unbalance on it, which there will be, here's your tuner. Um, that will put RF into the shack. Okay. Another thing you can do is move the ballon outside the house or move it right up here. I did it uh, both ways for a while. I mean, they both work. So that's a great antenna, but recognize that being a horizontal antenna, on 80 and 40, it's going to mostly transmit straight up. You can model that if you'd like. Okay, so, Lou, we've talked about an, a ladder line lightning arrestor. This is a fairly new product uh, from DX Engineering. It's less expensive than your standard Delta um, or polyphaser uh, lightning arrestors, okay? Uh, it will work uh, just fine for the ladder line. I really want you to move your ground, your main station ground, to right outside your station and then feed those wires via the shortest path possible up to your station. Don't let lightning in the house. Keep those lightning arresters outside the house, the ground rod outside the house. Can you put in another lightning rod, say at the base of the mast, and ground the mast? Absolutely. Um, best practice for grounding is in the second edition of the Grounding and Bonding book from the ARRL. And you will find in there that nearly every ham is woefully behind in getting all their grounding in. And you can certainly take it as a long-term project to start improving your grounding system. One of the things that will help with improving your grounding system is you will find that noise tends to go away as you make a firmer attachment to ground. So there you have it. I hope that helps you, Lou. Have a great day. Uh, please stick around, everybody. There's a few charts at the end that show uh, how to get in touch with me, things like that. Don't forget the monthly drawing. And until we next meet, 73.